<laughs> exactly. Hey, welcome, Pastor Cups. It's your boy. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> I just fuck with you. you. Got him. Uh, <laughs> take the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. We, we don't <laughs> use it, bro. We don't use it. <laughs> Anyway, where were we? Yeah. Hey, welcome to the episode. It's your boy Adam. What's happening? What's popping? Episode 247. I got the homie Tux up behind me. Hey, yo. I got Shams right next to me. Yo. I got number one in the building with all his head. Nothing matters. Exactly. Shout out to tens of tens of listeners. Shout out to tens of tens of viewers. Thank you for being here. We appreciate every single one of y'all. We got Sense in the building sitting in the kitchen. Shout out to Sense. Anyway, uh, where you guys want to start? Uh, topics, uh, news, things. Anyway, so we were watching mm. before we started. Remember, I told you I have a question. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were watching on Disney Channel, uh, The Lost Treasures of Arabia. A Disney Channel. Was it a Disney Channel? Yeah. 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 National Plus. Geographic. Plus. Disney, Disney. No, it was Disney Plus. Yeah, right. What a National Geographic production. I don't care what kind of production it was. Yeah. Disney owns everything at him. That's true. It owns so, me. That is I, never mind. I'm, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not saying anything, you. bro. Mm-hmm. Whatever Mickey Mouse anything. decides to do with you, is I mean, you and, me, you and Mickey Mouse do share the same size head. I'm just saying. So, you know, you could be his ear, though. Uh-huh. So, anyway, on Disney Plus, boys, we were watching The Lost Treasures of Arabia. The first episode was about Al Ula. Yes. And what they mm-hmm. found and so on. And then there was a question that I think you asked, or I don't know what it was. When we were talking about uh, how the British take. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know, they, they, they were talking about that. I was highlighting how, you know, oh, it's interesting that a lot of these archaeologists are French. Like, hmm, I never knew that the French were big into archaeology. And then the comment came, yeah, well, the French do archaeology. The British from, from a long time ago, take the archaeology. French have been doing that. Yeah, yeah. and the British come in, like, hmm, must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they take. So we shall not acquire or purchase. So my question is this. Loot is okay. the word. <laughs> <laughs> Daylight robbery. <Or> plunder, <laughs> in other words. So my question is this. So think of it now back, back in the day. I'm not saying it's right, but think of it back in the day, you are this huge ass empire, right? And you're sending your troops all over the world, try to conquer and get, you know, whatever th- makes your economy stronger, mm-hmm. right? Don't you also want to know what's crazy things that people have done out there and bring it back home for you to show everybody else? Wait, wait, wait. What, what do you mean exactly? So, like, think of the don't, don't think of the British Empire. Think of you. You yeah, are an emperor. Yeah, yeah so exactly. He's he's speaking of, yeah. the, of the very basic desire to capture the flag of the other empire by basically taking whatever they consider precious or valuable. Basically. Or what if you found like a nice bow? <laughs> You'd be okay. like, yo, I like this bow. Uh, at the end of the day. If you can actually <laughs> take it, nobody can stop you, but do and within the laws of law of war, basically, it's yours, right? Act- actually, there is precedent on this. If you go back to ancient civilizations and you go back into many palace complexes and what have you, you'll find two things. Lots of art that's taken from the other, <laughs> other civilization, guys. other guys. Lots of animals. I'm like, yo, these people have big things that have snakes for noses mm. and swords for e- tooths, which is an elephant. Mm. Mm. And the thing that uh, Tamerlane was famous for. Thanks for clarifying. That's an elephant. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was lost. I was not cool. What? Like, what, what is this mythical creature? Marvelous creature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. because, uh, what thief? <laughs> because think about it. If you're a Roman, if you've never seen an elephant, that's a goddamn monster. Right. Seen <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the thing that Tamerlane was famous for, he'd go Heads. that and he'd go into another civilization, empire, what have you, do a lot of killing and like, hmm, artisans, tal, and tamay, hain. You're mine. You're mine, tal. Mm. So you collect smart so, people. Yeah, okay. We know about collecting the smartest people there and bring, I mean, like Germany, the, the, the US is still doing it today. Mm. Bring the best and brightest and make them do the things that, you know, that you want to capitalize on them for. Operation Paperclip. Nuclear weapons. Yeah, boys <laughs> on spot. Both of them there. Mm-hmm. So you we, keep hammering the information on us. So mm-hmm. anyway, it's got to stick somehow. So, I mean, Shoof. we can say like right now, like, yo, that's, dis- that's disgusting and awful. Mm. But if you were the guy doing it at that time, well, at that time, there's different priorities. There's exactly there's a lot of things that you know nowadays be considered disgusting and awful that mm. you know it would be okay back in the day. But I do understand the desire to to. Are we talking about the family business, Chancy? Project, <laughs> project basically your own power by showcasing you know other empires and what you've acquired from them. You know, and everybody did that. We're talking about even the emperors. You know, one of the things that they would how would uh, a smaller kingdom submit to an emperor by by 
giving out booty, right? <laughs> yes. uh, okay, okay, first okay. off, no. Okay. <laughs> no, for real. Booty. That, no, that, that's on scene. This is on land. Okay, it's, it's, it's a tribute, <laughs> you know, a tribute, mm-hmm. if you would say. Uh, it's it's I wouldn't say it's unnormal. They also did give a booty. <laughs> did give a booty. <laughs> Let's be honest. In different sh- shapes and forms and sizes, you know. But so it's not unnormal. It does happen, uh-huh. and it was okay to happen. Now, in terms of the British, you know, that specific example, they pushed it. They, they overdid it. You know, yeah. like they took everything worth of value, and not just some things. Now, in your example, without like, understanding the value behind it. Yeah, because hey, they are savages, and we are not. That was the view. Anything right? that was grand, they took it because. Th- oh my God, how was this made? And anything that has significant value or they heard a story about it having significant value, they also took that. Yeah. True. And that happened in India, that happened in Africa, that happened in, in Southeast Asia. You know, that happened in all the different places the British had a footprint. Hence, you know, one of the many reasons the British got a lot of hate. It, it sort of really sums it up when the British, they don't really care about the local culture when they call the area of Southeast Asia Indochina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, is it Yo, in, I'm going to merge you yeah, real yeah. quick. Is it Culture in, fusion. Is it, in, yeah. is it Chinese? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> no, but the, th- the the nice thing about the documentary we were watching, or at least for me, the interesting thing is, it's, it's just the, the question that I asked you, when you look at Saudi and how big it is, the amount of archaeological uh, opportunities that are there, you know, all across the country is just huge, right? Yeah. Uh, even that one area of Al-Ula has three different civilizations across, you know, 1,000 years, uh, the Dadanites, uh, the Lahianites, and uh, the Nabatiyin. So you still have a lot to uncover. And that's the nice thing about this documentary, that it's shedding light on the efforts, on what they're finding, on the fact that this is a long-term project that's going to have a lot of, you know, results hopefully down the years. So I think all... Of th- Going through all of Saudi, there's a lot of history that is untapped. True. So yeah. I, th- I think for the next like 20, 30 years, we're always going to hear about these things coming up. And w- that history that was here. Because I remember there's an old mosque, I took up Jezan, mm-hmm. that was like, so like almost like destroyed 90% of it. I remember, I remember saw it somewhere, but I remember the exact details. And they were talking about how this was so important for a certain time, but no one knows what it is. So I'm sitting there like, yo, I want to know. Mm-hmm. Explain to me what happened over there. And and yeah, it's not something that we've you know, put a lot of effort in in the past years, but now you see that you know that engine being starting to move, right? You see, there's a the fact that you have this documentary is one example of that, right? Mm. You are putting out this type of footage because you want to inspire a next generation to actually be interested in this kind of thing. That's why it's on. You know, National I think Graphic, also on Disney. like credit goes to uh, Saudi that. So when we find these things that are tied to a certain time. We call it the name of that time. Mm. We don't consider it ours. We consider that there's a civilization here mm. that was here and they did things and we just talk about them as them. Yeah. We don't say this is us. Oh, it's just it's an extension of because we say, already have a culture. Exactly. Yeah, we true. No, but when you look at you it, heard that white? Yeah. Anyway, no mind, sorry. And, and uh, that's the thing. The area we live in has had so many different civilizations over the years, and it's and all of them in one way or the other meld into each other you know traditions are passed on in one shape one way shape or form so you do inherit this culture this heritage right uh the people that lived there had uh, had their descendants and some of those descendants kept on some of those three traditions so it is something that you take pride in because hey something you can learn from something you can tap back to something you can yeah but we don't claim it you don't claim it no yeah you don't claim because it. i look at it the same way we do with tribes right we know there's a lot of tribes in saudi and these tribes are not all claimed under one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The people of the south is different than people from the north, people of the center of the region, and so on. Even yeah. the east and west. Plus, there's no monoculture. Yeah. Plus, there's a lot of tribes are shared across borders. So the idea that it's sort of uh, illustrative of the the character of our region in general. Like a lot of things pass and bleed through borders. So the idea of claiming that this is something that is hagna ahna is not only incorrect, but ahistorical. Mm. Then, you know, when you're looking at that area of Mathran, al and Northwest uh, Tabuk, uh, the culture there was very close to this culture that was in at that time. Yeah. You know, Petra and, and those and those areas. So that's, you know, that's the point that you're making. You can't separate one area. Modern borders don't really define, you know, historical reality, let's say. Though it is interesting because sometimes uh, I get into these uh, wiki holes and you discover like, yo, 
there's a lot of history here, like a lot of civilizations, a lot of kingdoms, and we're talking not just in Al Ula and Petra, we're talking Central Arabia, Southern Arabia. Like I just discovered recently that there was a failed Roman exhibition to uh, Al Yemen mm. <laughs> because the whites kept on trying even back then. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And then they faced mountains and the mm. mountain men. Sounds like Afghanistan. Yeah. But anyway. Great, guys. This is amazing. Nice. Episode. Okay. Wow. Yep. Wow. Such knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> such information. I, I am so fun. <laughs> no way. I like that first episode, though. How many episodes did it drop? About? I honestly have no idea. We just saw the first one. I think every Sunday we're going to watch one and just come and review yeah, it on the podcast. Okay, yeah, topics. <laughs> let you know what, what's going on, basically. <laughs> All right, College of Arts. Chef, you said something that you read on a post or something. Uh, okay, so <laughs> apparently uh, in a strategic partnership with King Saud University, the Ministry of Culture has inaugurated the university's College of Arts, marking the first Saudi institution dedicated to an arts education. That is amazing. Nice. Um, this happened last week on Sunday, basically. I'm trying to read the headlines. <laughs> well, they're trying to read the headlines. I remember they had the launch like, of the college is a significant step in advancing higher cultural education in the kingdom. Expected to have a profound impact on natural cultural development, and it aims to establish an academic path crucial for creative talents and the cultural field at large. So they're going to teach me painting, basically. Three new departments: design, performing arts, and visual arts. Okay, there we go. I love the fact that you said just painting, basically, as if no. that's all of art. Yeah. No, well, Shamsi, so, put the mic to your face, please. Um, <laughs> why, why are you running um, away from the mic? Yeah, <laughs> I like that one, like, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be providing high quality specialized academic programs in line with national and international standards, fostering a supportive educational and artistic environment for research, innovation, attracting astounding, outstanding and talented students, uh, and preparing graduates technically, scientifically, and professionally uh, for work into the creative fields. Okay, see that? That's what you call working on grassroots. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where things are going to flourish. So my question here is, how much do we have to pay Turks to be a live model in one of these classes? All That's day for free. you to find out. <laughs> yeah. Tell me all the zeros. Mm-hmm. No, but seriously, like this is one of those things that like a lot of people can do initiatives, right? Yeah. We can say we want to support, we can create a ministry of culture for things, we can make a hundred commissions, but that... Is what's going to help. Well, it's, it's interesting. They're talking about the areas of cooperation um, between the ministry and the college. So it's going to be in uh, picking the specialties and curriculums, the student affairs, research and publications, supporting with providing international faculty members, events and symposiums, uh, culture programs, professions, incubators, accelerators, uh, and cultural asset activation. That's interesting. So within those three departments, design department is going to have a program on graphic design, fashion, and jewelry. Uh, performing arts will have programs in theater, cinema, and music, music sciences. That's and the, amazing. And the visual arts will have uh, print, uh, teaching printing, drawing, scu- sculpture, <laughs> and Arabic calligraphy. Nice. Hatta, we're talking about sculpture here. Yeah. And we're not just talking about the things that you would expect us to have background in as, as Arabs or as Saudis. We're talking about other forms of art that you know we still want to expand on. And you have all these students are going to, while they're studying, there's already commissions doing activations for things that they're already studying yeah. mm-hmm. and are interested in. So when you combine those two together, they're already graduating when there's already a functioning commission that's supporting what they were studying from before. Yeah. True. Well, 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 you said something about like things that we don't have a background in. And sculpture, for example, is not something that you would associate uh, uh, sculptures, for example, is not something you do associate us with, right? Compared to calligraphy, for example. Calligraphy, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's something that you have a deep uh, cultural history and background in sculpture, which brings us to something else I want to talk about, the thing we attended. But any, going back to this, for example, it's nice to see that it's represented across the different mediums, any, from graphic design to music, from theater to, to jewelry. These are very different mediums, which you... Ch- you're building a foundation for a future generation to actually go and create it. Like I see a lot of the things that they used to talk about were things that Her Royal Highness Princess Nur al-Faisal al mm. was already doing with colleges in Jeddah. Mm-hmm. Design programs. Exactly. She was, she's always been like a leader in this place where she's trying to teach the next generation to be interested in these things and also help them develop in it. Mm. Yeah, and now true. you're telling me there's a college of arts that also feeds to something that she's been working on for a long, long time. So... Like there's a lot of things that you feel like they are aligning when it comes to 
basically the College of Arts and all the commissions that we have. Oh, that's, and it's honestly, Annie, this is one of the things that you would expect the Ministry of Culture to actually be involved in, right? In terms of not just providing these events that we can go attend, in, in terms of providing the support and the education and the foundation for these things to flourish in a sustainable way. Because you do want to build the next generation that can actually go and do these things rather than, you know, get used to having them done for them, you know? This also gets us to another point. <laughs> I have an opinion I want to share with the boys. And they're mm-hmm. all going to kill me for this, so like, I don't care. Mm. I feel like this. the reason I'm so happy for this announcement of College of Arts is because I feel like we are very close to exhausting all the people that we already have. I feel like... In what it, sense? So all these initiatives that's happening by the commissions, we see a lot of names being repeated year after year, right? Okay. And mm. it's not like the work, like there was a huge improvement in the work from the year before. You feel like it's just the same, same thing, just new for the year after. Mm. And I feel like with this, this feeds into giving us new ideas, new people, new visionaries, new True. people who are looking at art in a way where they're already influenced by what's available today and they can move it forward. Because I feel like personally, like we've exhausted the people that we have. You do want a new generation to come out. I do I do understand what you're saying. For a long time, the old generation, the self-taught generation, the generation that's actually, you know, had the 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 opportunities to to grind and do the things that they do yeah. have been getting the opportunities that we see now. And we do Which is alhamdulillah. See, which is great. It's amazing. No, no, it is, it is great. Uh, but you do want to see a, a new generation that has a new voice, that has a new take on the world because that new generation is growing up in this new environment, right? That that old generation hasn't, it, it's experiencing in different ways, you know, rather than coming up in, in a world where nobody really understood what you're doing or why we're doing it. You're coming up in a world where everybody around you is supporting you and you're getting all of the knowledge and the information and, and the, the, you know, the assets that allow you to thrive in a much bigger way from an earlier stage. So that is going to be an interesting thing to see. And see. if you look at all, why are you raising your hand? Because I I, <laughs> I don't want to be interrupted. Booth. He wants a gold star. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me your point. I would challenge your assumption. Then can I say something that you can challenge me? By all means. So with what you said, what I also imagine all these students making, actually not even the students, even the artists are already available at Jack's with the warehouses that they have. You can bring in all these students and help even grow your art. They're learning and you're learning from them. So it's like... A, it's a mutual it's an exchange. Relationship. relationship. You know, yeah. so it's even good for the local artists that we already have for them to be able to talk to the new generation. Definitely. And either influence them and also get influenced by them. Definitely, yeah. You know? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I would challenge that to an extent because I believe the biggest determining factor of the emergence of new talent is the fact that the culture has shifted and it's going to take a while for, not a while, but like uh, some time to see that bear fruit. This is a good development insofar as that you, that raw talent will be empowered and emboldened to pursue their wish, their dream, whatever that may be. Yeah. But now we have the the option and capability of funneling that into a more structured and more uh, systematic approach, whereas you don't have the 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 lack of resources that you had uh, before. Mm-hmm. before. Yeah. So I wouldn't say this is going to transform or basically create artists out of nothing. It's just basically going to elevate the new up-and-comers that have been already enabled. It's going to enable. Yeah, yeah. that's it's what we're talking enable. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to empower a new generation. And I get that you're you're seeing a lot of uh, names getting repeated, but that's just yeah. to, to emphasize that this field is going to be taken care of. It's going to be lucrative for whoever is interested in that uh, uh, let's say field, whatever. No, it's yeah. not about being but, lucrative. It's about av- <clears throat> offering up new avenues of expression. You want new sounds. You want new, you know, faces. You want true, new true, true, uh, true. Uh, trends and ideas and thoughts. Although we have out. a not lot only, of people yeah. getting repeated, I think we still have a lot of tant- uh, talents that did not get get their time in the uh, in the spotlight. spotlight. Yeah, but this is gonna basically help elevate or help enable all these talents. 
يعني صح انه now you get, you're seeing a lot of names getting repeated بس انه these names are inspiring the next generation yeah. the next generation needs some time to get to that yeah, level that's But, what you hope for yeah. when I'm talking about the names being repeated I'm talking about the interest that's going to be into it if for a long long time we're going to have the same people this is Tash Matash all over again When when's the evolution going to come? When's yeah. the growth yeah, going to come? That's true. I see you. I see what yeah. you're talking about. So time, before yeah. before we destroy these people and put them too much out there to the point that they can't even create anymore, because the way you look at it, you feel like these people don't really have enough time for them to create from all the events that they're doing in the middle. True. Mm-hmm. So if they're not going to be able to breathe and create something amazing, you're going to exhaust them. They might lose the spark, and then you're out of luck. Now you lost one great person. So the more people you get involved, the better. And then when you're doing, when you give an X person a show again, alongside him, let's say he worked with five young artists, they can also have the exposure and also that can create and build. Mm. There's a huge opportunity here. If done properly, which I really pray it does, it could be amazing in the next 10 years. And it's something that the entire ministry can feed into from all the different types of commissions that are involved into the different training programs and to, yeah, you Jeff, know. The Ministry of Kush Atayal Afi, it's doing everything it can. And it's time for it's the people lot. to start it's moving. Doing a lot. Yeah, and, and this is the opportunity that, you know, you would, I, honestly, like um, you think back 20 years ago for someone who wanted to be a filmmaker, getting this kind of opportunity for someone who actually wanted to get into fashion, getting this type of opportunity and being able to do it in a, on an academically rigorous mm. level yeah. is, is incredible. Different honestly. Yeah, thing. so different, exactly. It's a different, it's a whole new playing field. It's stupid of you not to take advantage of it now. True. Go create, youngins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You always find new t-shirts honestly. dropping soon. Go create, youngins. Honestly, <laughs> no, we the College go, of Arts. Go create, comma, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> See, hence the pause. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I want to stick to arts and talk about Sora. Talk about Sora. What's Sora? Okay, uh, number one, take it off. Well, this there's this little game called Kingdom Hearts. You might have heard of it. All right, no, no, it. no, I'm I'm no, okay. not that. I Sora, actually please. have heard of this. I'm done. So, no. Open AI. Yeah. Okay. Do y'all remember? The, oh yeah <laughs> the text to images text uh, Will Smith yeah. eating spaghetti yeah that was no. hilarious we'll get that, that that's video yeah. when, you, when, you, when you type images. in text then it gives you an image perfect okay and then you remember last year when OpenAI also released, released text to video and it was that Will Smith eating cheese or spaghetti or something spaghetti yeah, yeah. yeah and it looked very weird mm. yeah Dag bil khams yeah so yeah. we all said <laughs> when they showed that oh imagine this in 10 years Imagine this was going to happen in 15 years. And that was what, how long? That, that, was, that was 12 months ago. <laughs> yes. And now? They just released the new version. Okay. And it is scary realistic. Ridiculous. We, Ridiculous. Did, you, did you see it? You didn't see it? What are we talking about exactly? What does it do here? Text to video. Text to video. Okay. You can write a text and it will create you a 60 second video. 60 seconds? Yes. Yes. It's a long ass video. Thank you. Okay. So imagine you can say at minute... At, at, 32 seconds, change it to summer, not winter anymore. And it will automatically do it for you. And and when it creates a video, what, what, top, what, what level of animation are we talking I'm about looking here? looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> the, term yeah. is, uh, the term is, this is going to start wars. I believe that is the level yes. of quality. So it's photorealistic, yeah, anyways. Yes. Photorealistic. Mm. Who did I send it to here? Did I send it to you guys? Is this photorealistic, Shamsi? Yes. Oh, you're kidding me. Yes. Uh, everybody, you can just Google this. This is super high def, bro. Thank you. It is really scary. Which one is this one? This is the eye. Oh yeah, that's that's crazy. There's so many people that did so many videos. It's still in beta mode, by the way. And this is free? No, it's not free. So it's still not okay. even out yet. It's still in beta mode. From what A I understand. A monkey playing chess in the park. How about this, Shamsi? How about let's create an animal? Uh, d- don't post my uh, personal videos here, Whoa, Turks. Bro. <laughs> I didn't say a naked monkey. That's, right. That's there, crazy. There's this one video, all right? Wait, wait. How How is this not going to fire every single animator that exists? Two golden retrievers podcasting on top of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. You can do that. You can just do that. That's so, a very simple. Whoa, if you don't pay bro. attention, you will find that okay, there's a lot of things that needs to be worked out. Bro, yeah. but it again, still has a problem with hands. Like a, hands go like this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hands, hands aside, but yes. you, you get prompts like that small prompt, will a three paragraph prompt that gives you a good quality video. It still understands that every looks aspect very of it. Very real. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Like Shutterstock is done now. Yeah. I mean, we're not yeah. just Shutterstock. We're talking about. 
ad agencies bro, yeah. are just enjoy production. Exactly. Co- no, no, yeah. production companies are done. Yes. Like, why would I? No, go no, no, sh- no. Production companies are not done. In a sense, because, because corporations are dumb. They can't. Know, they don't know how to do marketing advertisement. In other words, in terms of me having to go shoot something now, I don't have yes. to go no, shoot you know. anything. Yeah, exactly. now I just text it up for you, son. Exactly. You want a wintery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the, yes. Chuf, this brings us back to the point that we kept, I think we made a few episodes ago. Reality is not real. We're getting to the point where reality is not real. That You're looking at a screen and you can't just believe anything you look at a screen. Nothing that Take you your s- tinfoil hat off. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> just no, no. give it a second. No, no, no. I'm, I, 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 look, I'm with him on this one because I have a conversation. Yeah, no, no, because you're getting to the point where if you see something or you watch something or you hear something, there is no objective way for you to know if this is a real person saying something real or not as long as it's from a digital window yes i agree it's a which is basically your entire access to the world uh, true okay then that gives us to a question that just popped into my head since mm-hmm. you were saying that yeah about reality will we see a time where we we'll, we will have to separate the internet from humanity and what i mean by that is that no longer will governments and people issue laws or whatever and announce it online anymore because almost all of it is unrealistic. <laughs> so we go back to yeah. like newspapers. <laughs> mm. We are, no, no. It is the absolute opposite. We are literally running headlong into the digital, digital. Have you seen the Vision Pro? I know, I know. Okay. I'm with you that we're running toward it. But do you think there will come a time that we have to separate because videos like this can start wars? When I say, oh, put uh, Putin doing one, two, three, four, five, and I start posting videos. I don't think we will be able to. Even if we wanted to, I don't think we will be able to. Uh, I don't think we. No, I think we've gone. I think no, no. I think we've gone far. In, no, no. I don't think we got far. No, no, no. no, no in yeah. terms of being reliant on digital infrastructure. Now, I'm not saying. Now. I think now we can't unplug. I okay. I'm not saying unplug. You will say. You said no. That's exactly we are no longer separate as a government. We are no longer to make going to make announcements online anymore. Okay. Because everything online is weird today. <laughs> we don't know what's real or what's not. Okay. Like Biden wakes up. Did I say that? Yeah. yeah. That's the problem that we're but gonna have. That's in the Biden future. always. Oh, that's actually that's, mm-hmm. that's yeah, true. There's still there's still going to be official Biden channels that are it's news. You're still gonna have you know the official wire in your service. My mom's WhatsApp and your mom's WhatsApp is filled Yo. with a lot of ridiculous things. True. Yes, and that's oh. the OG. Do you know how many times mom sends me? video says hey let someone take the shooting video had that is some bullshit yeah sorry mom i love you yeah yeah, yeah yeah it still yeah. happens yeah. to me i didn't buy a samsung phone because <laughs> expo- i know you told me yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> see what i mean yeah. yeah so imagine the scare is gonna happen when a video looks so realistic and yeah just, just imagine israel's propaganda bro mm. imagine how good it's gonna be better uh, than it is today with, you know shout out to the americans for that no but Sunny, I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of Again, we 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 always thought of AI, you know, taking a lot of jobs away from people. Like now, we are looking at entire industries being cut off from from. That's one thing. That's one thing. And if I'm Gustav, because you're thinking in terms of geopolitical significance yes. and circumstances, it's hard for me to imagine a world that you know separates the internet from the, the functioning of society it depends of... will darpa say okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's true i still believe that in years to come the internet's gonna be separated between the worlds i, I truly believe in, that. in terms of every every country or every region having its own yeah, internet you know exactly. that that i can see happening but you know, that doesn't mean you're disconnecting people from the internet right you can, i didn't say with, 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 from the internet within, disconnecting with, internets from no, no. each other but within your own bubble you can still have misinformation come out you can still have you know and this is where not, you separate a uh, fuckery you know a footing see oh, okay listen all of uh, official news channels will come to Tuakalna. Yeah, okay yeah. that's separating yeah. you from that or up sure but you're still gonna need to uh like uh, do posts or well, like public posts on newspapers or Arab news or whatever. But when's the last time you bought a newspaper? Never, but I go to their websites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to their websites. When's the last time you saw a newspaper? They oh, give it out on. for free at the airport, but that's. <laughs> but Anna, Anna, for me, Anna. that's back in 1990 something. But yeah, I need, you still rely on newspaper websites. As as news outlets, news yeah. Yes. yeah, okay. Newspaper <laughs> news websites, newspaper websites. <laughs> <Okay>. websites <laughs> owned by newspapers, <laughs> owned by people. <laughs> <laughs> the term <laughs> is news site, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, 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 no,
طب سؤال can I make longer videos is it just limited this is just one minute still okay, still okay. Still so I can stitch one one hey I can stitch one minute videos into each uh, other it's really yeah. up to you bro okay. can I create yeah. a video where I'm loved and cherished yeah. <laughs> never no AI no, can, no. Can, <laughs> no, no technology <laughs> you can make that happen <laughs> Can, can I imagine though? <laughs> this is one of those moments yeah. that only God can really help yeah. you in this. This is when AI overheats. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Skynet is created. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you will never find You want love? Uh, no, I will destroy the world. <laughs> no, but see, any, if anything, what does this tell you? It tells you that it's literally all about manipulating pixels on a screen. That's, that's what it is. And the fact that we've gotten so good in it, good this good at it is is, it's is scary, scary, bro. It's really scary. It's, it's, it, bro. it is actually terrifying. On the fly, how how much time does it need to actually give you that video? I honestly have no idea yet. Everyone's still wor- testing out the beta version on Twitter, right? It's on. It's all over Twitter. It's everywhere. No, but I thought it was like a you tweet something at it and it, it generates a video. I don't think so. 2024. Yeah. Here the, we the post go. that I saw was all like celebrities like uh, writing. Oh, like prompts on their tweets. Oh, it could be. I, like I the really... monkey thing was Mr. Beast. No, yeah, no, you, you just discovered influencer marketing, you Turks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. Congratulations. Uh, oh no way. God. Mr. Beast? So it's like they contacted him. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. I, hate you. I thought it was just like through Twitter. They're the uh, X. Sorry. No. Never bro. mind. Never mind. I'm stupid. Ah, uh, internet. Thank you for never ceasing to scare us. Well, after uh, well, actually speaking of the internet, uh, have you all seen? Uh, uh, okay, we're gonna talk about sports. So I know a lot of you are not gonna be happy about this for a second. So <laughs> stop mm. sleeping, Turks. No. Do you watch the Super Bowl? I watch the highlights of the Super Bowl. Okay, amazing! Congrats, Chiefs! Yada yada to the end. Have you seen the halftime show? I have not seen the halftime show. Sorry, it reintroduced me to Usher again that I forgot. Okay, so I that, totally yeah, forgot. Yeah, we're talking about that. Yeah, I like I totally forgot. How amazing Usher is. He's a performer. Uh, Thank you. Voice. What was that? Hassas or no, no, never. That's Turks. No, no, no. You rediscovered Usher. <laughs> that's, that's, trust me. I rediscovered yeah. Hassas. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to tracks that I heard when I was in high school and he was like still at his peak to this day, mm. it's crazy how good Usher is. I think because we always see him like on TV doing random shows or whatever. It's like almost like, you know, oh, he's already done. We forgot how good of a singer he is. Yeah, like mm. he was like Chris Brown. He was everyone, like tied in one. Mm. He he and had he came, everything. And he came out of the 90s. Yes. Like he started in I the played 90s. for him like my way yesterday. I was like, do you know when this was? He's like, no, it's like 1997. Yeah. Like Usher's a 90s guy. Yeah. Yeah. Did I remember the song? I don't, no, I, you don't remember. Yeah, I didn't, you didn't, yeah, exactly. didn't ring any bells. You're a loser. Yeah. That's he is, he is, he's yeah. dropping a new album though, right? I, I don't care if he's dropping a new album. But what I'm trying to say is... When Swizz sees Usher, he's going to beat his ass. <laughs> on site. <laughs> it's literally on site. Yeah, okay? Yeah. okay. Now look, mm. so Usher is being Usher, okay. right? Now we've seen Alicia live. Mm. And we also like, we, we met Alicia. We love Alicia, True. right? Always. What's the number one thing that Alicia does when she's on stage? She's a professional. True. Right? True. Without a doubt. Mm. So when she was singing, he came behind her and then he grabbed her waist. So what she do as a professional, mm. she played the game, okay. right? She stayed professional and you know kept the act going. Mm. But that, I don't think that was part of the script. And I think for that alone, Usher will get his ass whooped yeah. for touching it. Yeah. I mean, see, that's the thing. <laughs> okay. you know, maybe Usher got you know into the performance a little bit too much. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's still. I so, uh, get got into the performance and he's going to get these hands. <laughs> exactly. He's going to get a two-piece Zaza. Yeah, we don't know what he's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the Usher one day is going to be laying down and he's going to swoop on top of Zaza, 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 Zaza. This is what we're projecting now. <laughs> That's you know, what's going to happen. For 2024. He's going to give him a Zaza, bro. Ah. He's really going to take him to Zaza town. Oh, I'm going to let it burn now. <laughs> <laughs> is it burning? <laughs> No, but see, Usher was so he went back to that old bag of the yeah. He did hits. he did all his hits, man. Mm. Uh, it's just sad to know that like Usher's gonna lose all his teeth. I mean, it's sad. <laughs> this is like, not you know, part. This is not part of the plan. But you know, like if I was Usher, I'll be happy. Like you know, at least I did the halftime Super Bowl show. Everyone fell in love with me went again. Go back high. to old music. You know, mm. you're gonna lose all your teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You won't yeah. be able to sing again. Worth the, the streams. Price. You know, but again, you know, at yeah. least you had your high moment. This is this is just yeah. high moment. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> After this is a fall. It's yeah. a Super Bowl, bro. Where else are you gonna go? It's done. That's yeah. done for Usher. Six packs. Yeah. The yeah. second Swiss yeah. season. I hear his DMX in the background. Then, 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 and just Swiss walking to a room. 
Uh, Honestly, if you have no teeth, you're going to hit the note, notes easier, I think. <laughs> He's going to be whistling his music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, After Swift is done with him. No. no. <laughs> See, that's a whole new playing field for oh, Usher there, you know. Usher, what an idiot. Bro. Whistling music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, genre acquired. My word! <laughs> Did you enjoy the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. Okay. It was amazing. I really loved it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but imagining Usher getting his ass whipped by Swiss was just like everything <laughs> okay. for me, bro. This was, this was the, uh, the vision I didn't know that I wanted. <laughs> hey, Usher asked for it. I mean, <laughs> Usher he, literally he, asked he, for he it. He went for yeah. it. He went yeah. for it. Yeah. I mean, Alicia's the professional, but Swiss is from <laughs> the streets, bro. <laughs> like, you know, Swiss. It's a different ball game there. <laughs> oh, Swiss is going to beat his ass. Oh, rest in peace, Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all hits. Anyway, and he got all the hits yeah, from Swiss. Then. <laughs> Good luck with all the, the rest. <laughs> oh my God, what, what has been going on? Any any news, boys? Anything? Um, like oh, we just wrapped up everything already. Any? What's it's going handy. on? I'm asking y'all. Yo, what's this about snitches? So. <laughs> <laughs> about snitches. <laughs> Bro, we, so we're protecting snitches what, now. What are we talking yes, about? Yes, we protect snitches so they don't get stitches. <laughs> okay, what happened? So recently a law was passed to expand and encompass the protection of whistleblowers and eyewitnesses. Mm. Because as I'm sure you've heard, there was a recently high profile case where somebody was got for <laughs> embezzling around eh, 200 million mm. reals ish, a little bit there. Eh. So the idea is that, yo, if you see something, say something. And uh, nobody's going to come get you if we're, you're being protected by the law. Okay, okay first so. off, hold on. I have the article here from Saudi Gazette. It says, The weekly session of the cabinet, chaired by a custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman and Riyadh, also approved the regulation of the Saudi Tourism Authority. Okay, that was, all right. A few years ago, the Shura Council approved the draft law to ensure protection of whistleblowers, witnesses, experts, and victims who are at risk of providing information on crimes, paving the way for the final approval by the cabinet. The, miles, the milestone law is aimed at providing security to individuals who may come under threat for giving evidence in court cases. No, I'm, I'm down with nice. that law. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's, you're yeah, I'm basically reassuring that. people for, for doing the right thing. Hey, yes. listen, if you are stepping forward, there's nothing for you to be worried about. We got about. you, yeah, yeah, don't exactly. worry about it. The law gives power to judicial authorities to provide the necessary protection to witnesses to witnesses, victims, whistleblowers, experts, and members of their families from any threat, including assault, yes. revenge, intimidation, and others. The draft law with 39 articles contribute to combining crimes by encouraging and facilitating information sharing and providing protection to informants, witnesses, experts, and victims from any attacks of threats, material or moral harm, or anything that may adver adversely affect... Her. Oh, I can't see anymore, bro. Adversely. The delivery of the such information. Mm. Um, so, so it's a malik law. Yeah, it's a malik law. It's a malik law. Basically, I'm the I'm the I'm the I'm the okay. This law is in the best hal and la chilha. Malik. Amurk tayba. Exactly. The get sudden. I get to you. خلاص. ما ما عليك. So the question here is that uh, I am assuming this law covers both the public and private sector. Oh, yeah, definitely 100%. Yeah, because I I imagine one of those sectors is more problematic than the others. A hundred percent. Look, at the same time, like, I'm down with that. The way I understood this when I heard it was totally different. Well, again, the, the subject was stupid. But, yeah, if someone is actually giving out information of some harm that's being done, of course, he needs the full protection he can yeah. get. No, but Sunhina Kaman, we're talking about, any. that's an interesting thing. I didn't think, actually think about that in terms of you are an employee in a company and, you know, you are going through a situation in which you believe that you're being treated unfairly, for example, or there's some wrongdoing going on at the company. You can step forward and wait, actually... Wait, wait. Again, being treated unfairly is different, is different than, different no, no, than breaking the yes. law. Being treated unfairly in terms of being, for example, uh, the employee handbook or, or guidelines not being adhered That's to. not a legal document. Yes. It's not a legal document? No. no. It's not part of the company... I don't know. Guidelines, it's bad, it's bad. guidelines it's, or framework or, agree, or agreement with the employee. It's at their discretion. It's, but it's <laughs> yeah, not, the company, the yes. company, the company is liable to. If the company to, is doing any wrongdoing that's affecting the public mm -hmm. or affecting uh, any 
a governmental entity mm. or has an effect on someone or the company has an effect on someone yes okay if it's doing that yeah. yes yeah. but not the employee yeah no. Shamsi, you can't employee is someone though if the employee no the employee if he comes up with that information he has the evidence and it's shown that he has the evidence he will also get the protection yes, yes. that's what i'm saying that's yes. what i'm saying yeah. exactly so Shamsi. being adversely reacted to by his company his company with an unfairly firing him or something along those lines. No, no, Shamsi, you can't. That's you can't, totally different. You can't mm-hmm. sue the company for canceling uh, Casual Thursday, for example. Yeah, <laughs> again, that's, that's not. That's not that's, how dare they? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, again, that's not what we're, we're talking about. When we're talking about these types of incidents, we are talking to a breach of the legal code of the country. We're talking about embezzlement. Regarding, we're talking about money laundering. Money laundering. We're talking about. Uh, uh, criminal accounting and, and for side, public tra- inside trading, for example. For one of that is uh, yeah, there we go. So that's, well. that, that falls under that. Yeah, uh, uh, false accounting, for example, in a publicly traded company, cooking the books, as mm-hmm. they call it, that has a lot of consideration. But my question here is, if we're talking about a fully private company, family enterprise, and the general bullshittery of a family company, would that apply as well? Limithan, uh, again, we're talking family company, fully owned by a family. We're talking... What well, that happened before? Um, no, uh, go ahead, sorry. So if I am a family company and I say, mm, okay, the budget allocation for the organization, I'm going to take a little bit off the top and just uh, use it for my vacation in Italy, for example. Would that be considered a breach of... If it's a public listed company, yes. If it's a family, private company, that's their money. Mm. The difference here, but what I thought you were gonna say, what if it's a private family company that does something to play with the code and the laws and in order for it to, you know, gain an unfair advantage, exactly. Which happened, there's actually a case that happened here in Rial, in which the government got involved in when one family company actually did that mm. and they got caught for it and they brokered a deal. At least that's what, that's what he said. When he got no, but saying, again, again, we're going back to the idea of sharing information in which you believe you know something unlawful is happening. Yes. Right. So and and ensuring that whatever you think or whatever you might be worried about is is not going to be a concern and allows you to not be biased. And it also comes down to your life. If you know someone's going to do something wrong to someone else, and you have the information, and you go, mm. you say, "Yo, this person is going to hurt this person." you're also protected by that law. Mm. So that person or his cousins don't come take revenge on you. So there's nothing there's nothing bad about this whatsoever. No, at all. No, 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 this no, this no. is great. Danny. Does it affect, you know, I think what you answered is, is sounds good, Danny. If in terms of a public list company, it wouldn't make sense. In terms of a family company, it's a private thing. Exactly. The, the, <laughs> the interesting thing here is about insider trading or basically... The sharing of insider The sharing of insider yeah. knowledge, whatever. We know as a country, al uh, is a thing. Yeah, majalis. Yeah, and majalis is a thing. So my question is, if I am, let's say, listener number one in a ex majlis and I hear somebody talking about, quote-unquote, taraf ilm, is taraf ilm a legal uh, breach at this point? Well, it depends where does that person work. If that person works in the field, that he can give you an advantage, then yes, that's a problem. What but if, if it's what if he's one, heard, what if he's one layer removed, for example? Oh, that's, that's still the same problem. Mm. If that information is liable to give you an advantage, then exactly. we have an issue here. That's the insider information. Like there's a lot of things about. that we hear that we know it's coming to the people that we know, but to some people, it can give them an unfair advantage over everybody else. Mm. And that's why you, you we're always paying attention. And then when that thing gets announced, we find that no, it's a tight knit thing, and you know no one's gonna take advantage of it. But I have to uh, state on the record here: it is one of the most fun and pleasurable experiences, where you hear somebody in a midges talk bullshit about something you know for a fact is incorrect, <laughs> and, you're and just, you just let them go. <laughs> yeah, and it's just mm, I work there. I know you're full of shit, but come <laughs> uh, That's good. Sometimes you have to let it go. Let, let them do whatever they want, because yeah. you are liable. And the fun fact, when they don't even know I work at the place. Exactly. We're not saying it's true, but this is an example. Example. Yeah, because yeah, you ain't got no job. Mm-hmm. Or, friends. <laughs> or friends. Or friends. <laughs> or love There's or There's nobody that wants to talk to you, number one. We know yeah. this. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. living by the disability checks. Yes. Oh, look at you. Uh, let's talk about, before we bounce, uh, what's going on with the Russian nukes and uh, space and... What? what? So, a... Yes. Yeah, this actually happened okay. over the last... Oh, no, this is even worse. 
So a recent uh, tweet by the U.S. Uh, National Security Commission Committee or what have you. It was like four days ago. Yeah, four days ago. And like say, there is an impending issue of critical national security to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And once they did some digging and you follow the news, these people stated like it is situated in space. What is situated in space? The threat. Okay. And once you did some more digging, basically they discovered that probably the Russians have some weaponized space capacity, like satellite or some something. So the speculation here is that they have the ability to conduct weapon or uh, offensive uh, actions from space. So the discussion here is it is it kinetic? Is it thermal nuclear? Or is it uh, energy-based or electronic-based? So the U.S. believe that the Russians can hurt them from space? Yes. Yes. Ooh, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to you. Do you know why? When would because the Russians have built this capability? Because they caught the U.S. Mm. sleeping. The U.S. have been The report also said that no, on X day, Russia out of nowhere sent, uh, what's the name, a rocket to space, not okay. knowing what's the payload on it. Okay. And so the question was, hmm, what was that? Hmm. And that's when they start paying attention. But funny enough, right after that announcement, by less than, I think, 24 hours, SpaceX launched six rockets into space, two of them for the NSA. Okay. Or the CIA. I think it was the NSA. Okay. And Follow that taxi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly that's what it was. It was. <laughs> Literally, bro. That's the only bunch I can add a like jazz. I'm going. Okay. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> okay, it's, it's the It's the military equivalent of Jibaz bit Kutar. That's literally what it is. No, but see, that, that, that I'm surprised if that is actually true. One thing I do know is that the U.S. military has has very often exaggerated the threat of foreign militaries just to be able to beef up its own weapons industry. That's one. And fund it. And fund it. And two, there is plenty of different agendas within the U.S. military, each one that wants to exaggerate. No, no, no. The Chinese chips are the ones we should be worried about. Everybody has their own problem and they want to make seem that their problems seem bigger. So it seems like Space Force, you know, mm. is looking for a reason to be relevant here. Thank you. You know, and that's what I Hey, mean. we just got some... We just got data, and the data. We are yes. space force, and mm. that's why I didn't finish my sentence. Mm. Two of them for the NSA, and four was for the space force. There we go. Okay, and now I'm not about the buffaloes. Yes, because it's funny how, like, when Donald Trump announced the space force, we're like, "What the fuck do they need this for?" Bro, that's the and thing. And less than eight years, they're like, "Oh shit, yeah. this is why we had this. We were it's, ready to." This is this is you know exactly what this is like. This yes. is like those poor motherfuckers in Siberia. Okay, the Russians put them there. They're like, "Ma alek bijun al Chinese," and the Chinese are like, "Why the fuck would we go up there?" You know, so nobody's going to space, right? Uh, this is uh, similar to the moon landing. Yeah, I did. Sure, the moon landing was a big ass dick waving contest. That's, yes. that's a whole different, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole different thing, you know. No, we have a bigger. Yes, but the bullshit that happened for it to happen. Mm. Oh, how are we going to fund all of this? Oh, we need to tell people this is a space race. Yeah. And so we can put yeah, a lot that, of money that, into that, that, that. That started off with, with you know, the Russians launching a satellite first. That yes. caught the U.S. sleeping. Like, oh, dog. shit. No, it was even before the dog. The dog came later. The dog came first. You know, <laughs> the, the, there was a dog <laughs> later. Anyway. <laughs> but, but, but that... <laughs> my bad. Keep going. Okay. For that, and and that's, the, that's the interesting <laughs> thing about the U.S. and the space race. Like, when you hear about the stories about the space race, what do you know? Hey... The U.S. made it to the moon. But who made it to space first? Mm. Mm. You forget about that part of the story. Exactly. But, you, uh, did you know what this sounds like? What? You know when you have the annual budget exercise in your company? <laughs> exactly. We take on my like, yo, you didn't use your budget. <laughs> so we're going to cut it. No, 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 Send no, 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 there are nukes in space. Yeah. There's a dog <laughs> <laughs> floating in space <laughs> to figure out there what this dog, dog is doing. Okay, we will send three cats to chase him. Uh, dogs chase cats. Uh, yeah, no, so I, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not yeah, I'm not gonna be worried about Russian reverse. nukes. In, in, <laughs> he watches Tom and Jerry reverse. Yeah. <laughs> he rewinds Tom and Jerry. Yeah, to him, he, he grew up. He grew up calling it Jerry and Tom. <laughs> Well, not that dog. Uh, yo. you, you just sent two cats to chase a dog, bro. Yeah, man, <laughs> what are you talking about? Russians are weird, bro. Three cats. Three cats. Yeah. So, they were wearing a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> they look like one big dog. <laughs> 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 
have seen this one. Oh, Who would you shit. imagine would be smarter, a Russian dog or are you an American dog? <laughs> None. No, no, bro. I imagine a Soviet dog would be a very smart dog. Anything so it's a very sadistic <laughs> dog. I'll bro, give you that. He understands yeah, marks yeah. and analysis. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, he struggled. I, I'm just saying. Oh my god. He anyway, got, anyway, got one anyway, we appreciate everybody for. Our but do you guys ever, <laughs> ever think that there is a dog floating in space? Right <laughs> no, there is, there's bro, a dead there dog is. floating. There is, yes, in there space. is a there's dead monkeys dog floating still floating in space, in space right yeah, now. There's a monkey also. Yeah, yeah. they didn't bring no, didn't them the, back. Didn't, didn't the monkey die in space? Yeah, well, but where is he? Yeah, all that. Is- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they're there, all bro. dead. Send the cat. Yeah, listen, <laughs> they're all dead. We're they're not saying dead. one of them is alive. <laughs> the dog didn't start a civilization on Mars or something. No, 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 no. He's dead. No, so the question so is, Asan, even when so they I sent say. them out, you should. Well, they didn't lover, give them food. You know lovers, that. we are sorry. <laughs> it's not our fault. You know, talk to NASA. When was the time where they shut off the camera on the dog? Yo, don't say that. That is. Ugh. Don't say that. Like, okay, right. we're done. Bye. Continue apologizing. No, to the animal most lovers. likely, I think. I think most likely, the signal just cut off. Come they just kept sending the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog kept going. He <laughs> left <laughs> 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 Oh, that is sad. No, that no, is this, so is sad. Yeah, this is probably true, guys. We're sorry, but this is probably true. Oh man! Why, 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 why bring the room down, guys? We're not bringing the room down. Yeah. We're just saying the what Russians they did. did it first. I don't know, but yeah. you might have should. <laughs> the Russians oh, did it first. We go play fetch in space. <laughs> 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 oh, we'll throw ball. Oh, he will come back. Don't worry. <laughs> Go, Kamachka. Go. Or, or what if, because they sent the dog, the dog is the one who actually created the nukes. And the dog is in space and you know what? There's a scientist dog in space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> With glasses and yeah, an yeah, outcoat. Yeah. They and sent guess, him to a private lab. Guess what? <laughs> guess, <laughs> they created nukes. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Guess what? That yeah. proves that fucking Russian dogs are smarter than No, that. and it proves that dogs are loyal. Yeah. You sent me True. in space because you had an enemy True. I created nukes. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going after your enemy. Oh. Hundred years from that's now. Loyalty. Very smart dogs would come back. <laughs> <laughs> I am the good boy. Oh, I will be the goodest boy. We did we did a lot of like, you know, real topics, so this is why what the stupidity is coming out of oh, the that, that was nice. Oh, anyway, nice. before we bounce this week, uh, for everybody listening, it's gonna be uh, Ben Ali. Yes, sir. Uh, Les Benjamin is also having a show. There's multiple things happening this week, midweek, before even the weekend. So we wish everybody the best. Go out, have fun. We'll see everybody at Ben Ali and everywhere else. And also, Sense, shout out to the homie Sense. Sense, chilling in the room. Your merch Damn. is coming out in Ben Ali, right? It doesn't matter. Your stuff is coming out of Benali. Yeah. So if you want Sense's merch, go to Benali. Where's we're we gonna find it? Look at him being all humble and stuff. Look yeah. at that humble man. Because I don't think he ever put it in store in Riyadh. You never did, right? Yeah. This, this is the first, first time. time for yeah. everything. Yeah. That, mm. it's, Look at that proud boy. Look at him. Mm. Appreciate it. Just give me that thing behind you right there. Because what's the, the, the subtle thing? The subtle yes. thing. Uh, shout out tens and tens of listeners. Shout out tens and tens of viewers. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, what I'm holding is a fucking game changer. Mm-hmm. And when Sense blesses us with this and actually starts releasing it, this is going to be one of, if not the best, sneaker that was released. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, it looks Period. so much better here in person than it probably does on screen. Not only that, when you really look into it and you see all the little things that Sense has put into the it. details. Not, not only the details, like the inspirations in it. Yeah. It is so beautiful and has such value. So many homages yeah, like, scattered like, around. You didn't only give Jidda like, you You went crazy with Bic. You went crazy <laughs> with Saudi Airlines, right? And now, now this, I mean, I, I don't know of anyone who did so much for one city. To be honest, no, for real, no, for real. I'm, I'm not yeah, saying man. this, you know, because you're here. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, you know that. <laughs> but this, this is wild, bro. So I wish you all the best, bro. But seriously, guys, I know that y'all can see this, and maybe it's not clear, but when it's out, this is gonna be yeah. one of a kind. No, seriously, it's amazing, amazing. Terex, you can have this for you, by the way. Thank like, you don't give it to him when he leaves. All right. By the way, just keep one foot. <laughs> so he doesn't go. <laughs> give me that one real quick for you, run. Because I always want to show this back, bro. I always want to show this back. Give me this shit. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, this is a real one. Oh, look at this. Look at this man, bro. Mm-hmm. What he creates, man. Mm-hmm. Look at this. I never thought that this color green would be amazing with yellow and black. Though, honestly, and the material, just looking at it everything, now, you see the material yeah, and you see the quality in it. You know what I think? I think Sense makes these crazy things and he loves it. He just keeps it for himself. Definitely. <laughs> True. <laughs> this is what I think. True. I think he's like, you know what? I'm not going to sell this. I'm just going to enjoy it. Why the hell exactly? I'll just walk around. I'll just rock this on my own. Because this man uses this shit, man. Again, see, man. 
Hometown hero, bro. Hometown so hero. So if you ever see this, y'all know what it is. Exactly. Shout Thanks out to so. tens and tens of listeners again. We appreciate y'all. Turks run. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Turks to keep it <laughs> and bounce. Exactly. Bash it back. Uh, we out? We out. Peace. Peace. Peace.